I'm Eric Nisa with NewShooter.com, and we are at IBC 2019. I'm at the Black Magic booth with Stuart. How's it going, Stuart? It's good, really good, thank you. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about this new plugin for B-RAW or Black Magic RAW. Uh, it's available now for other editing software. Yeah, well, we obviously talked earlier about the video assist and, and how that now has Black Magic RAW on, and the capability of being able to work with with third-party cameras like Panasonic's camera and, and Canon's camera. You know, 12 months ago, we actually announced Black Magic RAW, and one of the commitments that we sort of made, or one of the things that we really focused on, was trying to ensure that we could encourage and really kind of spread the love around Black Magic RAW, and also get other people to benefit from this technology that we've invented, and. One of the things that we've really done, uh, we've really focused heavily on is about other NLEs and how other NLEs can benefit from Blackmagic Raw. So um, if you take the downloader now, the downloader install for Blackmagic Raw and you run that, we actually have plugins now for Avid and for Adobe Premiere. So that means that anybody who is working with those NLEs will have the capability of working with Blackmagic Raw within those software applications. And that's a big step because you know we, we understand that you know, in the NLE space, there's um, people have a preference around what it is that they use. It's not always going to be Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve, you know. So we have to be obviously, um, uh, we, have, we have to obviously work with those guys to ensure that, that that those people can get that benefit too. And you know, we're pleased to say that the first major step of achieving that um, has been announced here. Now, uh, is it going to get a different type of performance or experience? Does the plugin look different in those NLEs? So, so the main difference is, is that through Avid and through Premiere at the moment, it's going to be CPU only. Um, obviously, within DaVinci Resolve, when we when we worked at developing the Kodak, um, we focused on GPU and CPU capability. So right now it's CPU, um, but what you've also got to remember with that is that you know you're talking about a very very complex file format that has got a huge amount of information and a huge amount of data, but we have worked incredibly hard to ensure that we keep those sizes minimal. So, you know, already a lot of people will, which will be working with um, traditional codecs out there will be familiar with working with large, you know, large file types. The benefit of Blackmagic RAW is the file type is actually quite insignificant. So whilst you won't see the same speed and capability and performance as you would do within Resolve, you're still going to get a huge amount of benefit with something that is still a fraction of the size of maybe what you would usually be using. And you get to work in that raw you know, space, which is really powerful. Yeah, well, well, raw as we know that, you know, if you can have all that flexibility to, to affect that, that footage, you know, um, throughout various stages of the post-production process, you know, you're ultimately giving yourself that additional flexibility that we all want without obviously going and degrading that original file type. And that for us was a key key point with Blackmagic Raw in that you know you have the ability to always retain that original file whilst making all your amendments and all those changes of things like ISO settings, color tints, highlight roll off and all that stuff. So again it's all about flexibility but now what we're talking about as well is is about that openness, you know, and about trying to ensure that everybody out there has accessibility to Blackmagic Raw. Is the interface different? Are there feature sets that aren't available in the plugin that are available in DaVinci Resolve? So we've tried to cram as much as we can do within that, that, um, that plugin into both of those two applications. And what you'll see is that things like um, ISO settings, tint settings, you know, midpoint, shadows, all that stuff, you know, all that will exist, all the key features will exist. Um, we'll have a slightly more um, functionality within, within DaVinci Resolve, but nothing that isn't effectively key as what we would say. All those key features exist within those two applications. Um, typically the way that that would work is obviously having to work within a framework of, of those applications, um, but we've certainly done our best to ensure that we can get as much in there as we possibly can. And as far as it being CPU only, is, is that's not really a, a black magic issue, is that's more like say an Adobe or an Avid issue? Well, well, obviously those applications do give you the opportunity to work in CPU and GPU as well, and that's something that we will be working with in the future, you know, to try and get, you know, try and maximize and optimize the capability of that file. But right now, let's 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 take this bit baby steps. Let's get this in, let's get you know people working with it and benefiting from it, and let's see where it goes. You know, Black Magic has always been about trying to ensure that we keep things as open as possible. And you know, we work with these companies on a daily basis, and you know, for us. Um, what we're trying to do is is trying to assist 
as many people as possible and trying to take on this technology that we we love and um, you know everyone's been really receptive with us so that's that can only be a great thing all right thank you very much thank you